kumukata kwando berera Wali nasa nindeka Ubi ku ubi ku na mungo jiru wande Wali nasa nindeka Ubi ku ubi ku na mungo jiru wande Wali nasa nindeka I'm a storyteller and I grew up in a home where we told stories all the time. My mother was a teacher and a very good storyteller. My father a civil servant and a poet and a storyteller. And so I learned from a very early age to tell stories. And I learned that stories are not just about entertainment. That stories are actually about healing, about making sense, about doing all sorts of things. And so, in 2008, when a colleague of mine, Dorian, asked me to join him on a project to do storytelling um, with orphans and vulnerable children and to teach the caregivers how to use story and creative process, I jumped at the opportunity. And as we were preparing, we thought our work is really to help the caregivers tell stories well. So the idea of story well started to emerge. And then as we spoke about the work we'd done with stories and we spoke about stories in our lives, we realized that stories make us well. A well-told story can bring a lot of healing. And so the idea of story well grew even more. And then we began to look around for stories that we could use. And we realized we have folk tales, we have personal stories, there are written stories, and they're all the stories that haven't yet been told. There is a whole well of stories that is sitting there waiting for people to dip into it. And so the idea of story well began. My particular passion is the oral tradition the act of storytelling here and now and in the moment, because you can't pause, you can't fast forward, you can't rewind, you can't download later and watch. You have to be present and in the moment, right here, right now. And I think in the world that we live in today, that's a skill that is becoming extinct. You go to a conference, you don't pay attention because you'll always download the PowerPoint presentation. And so, I have developed the passion of storytelling and I want to encourage people to use this because I've learned that not only are you present and in the moment as a storyteller, I have to be present as I look at the audience. Every time I tell a story, even if I've told it a hundred times, it is different depending on where I am, who I am with, how I am feeling today. And the story listener has to be present, because if you're not listening to me, then I don't have a story to tell. But if you do listen to me, hopefully my imagination connects with your imagination, and together we create this amazing world. And then we travel into possibility. We travel into worlds that don't exist. And when we look at things like everything we've been talking about today, we need to be able to imagine another possibility. We need to allow ourselves to see the world completely differently from how we are seeing it today. And storytelling enables that. It enables me to take two complex ideas that don't really seem to sit well together, and I can put them together in a story, and paradoxically they hold together, and I learn something new. The thing about the oral tradition also is if you don't remember the whole story, that's okay too. Because I firmly believe that what you remember in the story, that's the only important thing in the story for you today. And if you don't remember anything, then that story wasn't for you, and that's okay. Tomorrow there will be a story for you. And so I want to invite you to come with me. I'm going to tell you a story. But before I do that, I just want you to reflect on today. You've spent the whole day sitting here listening to people talking to you. And something might have stirred. Maybe a question. Maybe an issue that you're interested in. Just think about that. 
And maybe this story will help you look at it differently, and maybe it won't. But just hold it inside. Once upon a time, there was a village that was nestled at the foot of a mountain. It was a village that was blessed with plenty. The fields were rich and the harvests were amazing. The rains came when they were supposed to and the sun shone brightly. The cows in the fields, they were strong and the milk was sweet and the chickens produced eggs all the time. It was a wonderful place to live. And the relationships between the people in the community reflected the abundance that the earth gave them. When a child was born, they celebrated together. When there was a wedding, everybody was there. When someone died, they mourned together. As time went by, they began to take this abundance for granted. They forgot to leave the land to lie fallow sometimes. They stopped taking care of their forests. They stopped taking care of the animals. And then, the rains didn't come anymore. And the plants began to die. And the food became less and less. The animals started to die too. And very soon, the relationships in the community began to fall apart. And people no longer invited their neighbors to eat with them. In fact, if somebody knocked on the door while they were eating, they quickly hid the food, and just opened the door a little and said, yes, can I help you? It became a difficult place to live. One day, an old woman came walking down the mountain, carrying on her back a big black bag. Nobody saw her come into the village. No one, that is, except for the boy who was sitting in the tree, just at the edge of the village. And he followed her as she came into the, the village center, into the village square. And he watched her come, and she put her bag down. And then she collected firewood, and she set up a fire. And then she came, she opened a bag and took out a big black pot. And then she took a smooth black stone out of the bag and she put it into the pot. By this time the boy could no longer contain himself. He said, hello ma, hello ma, what are you doing? Well, my boy, I'm making stone soup. Stone soup? asked the boy. It's very tasty. You can come and help me. And so he ran to the well and he fetched a bucket of water and he poured it into the pot and they lit the fire. And very soon the water was bubbling. And she took out her ladle and she started to stir. And she tasted it and she said, Mmm, it would be very, it's really tasty. But it would be even better if we had some herbs. And the boy said his mother had some herbs and he ran home and got some herbs. By now, the villagers had noticed that there was something happening on the village square and so they had started to gather around the village square. And they were all sitting there in clusters and whispering, who is she? What is she doing? Do you know who she is? And the little boy came and said, she's making stone soup. And the adults looked at him and said, stone soup? Well, the old lady continued to stir her pot and taste and say, hmm, it would be really nice if we had some carrots or some peas. And somebody said, I have carrots and I have peas. And somebody offered chicken bones. And before you knew it, the whole community had brought things to put into the soup. And they were all sitting around waiting for the soup to get ready. And they had started talking to each other, first about the stone soup, and then about their relationships, and then about the land that was barren, and what could they begin to do. 
And when the soup was ready, everybody had a cup of soup. And then, when the eating was finished, the singing and the dancing began, and the community stayed together and laughed together like they hadn't done in such a long time. It was very late that night when they went to sleep. And early the next morning, a gentle rain fell on the village. And the people woke up with new hope. No one knows what happened to the old woman, because nobody saw her leave. But they all agreed that she had brought new hope to the village. And it was never the same again. Thank you.